You need to learn what NAPs, UAPs, CNAs, CMAs, LPNs, and LVNs do because there may be questions about delegation on the NCLEX. I have talked to some students that have had lots of delegation related questions on their NCLEX. Keep in mind that each state, province, and territory have their own laws around what regulated and unregulated personnel can do in the clinical setting. To complicate things, different institutions may restrict the scope of their employees. However, in this video, I am going to review the general roles of NAPs, UAPs, CNAs, CMAs, LPNs, LVNs, and RNs within the Collaborative Healthcare team and provide some general guidelines that will help you pass the NCLEX. Remember that the NCLEX is textbook based and written to test your knowledge of general delegation principles. It is not state or province specific. You need to know what tasks need to be completed by the registered nurse and what tasks can be assigned to unlicensed assistive personnel and licensed practical nurses. You also need to know how to prioritize your own care and when to contact the patient's primary health care provider, but I will cover that in another video. The NCSBN refers to people who work with nurses in structured nursing organizations as nursing assistive personnel. It is up to the registered nurse to assess if a task is appropriate for delegation. That means you need to know any laws or rules for delegation, your scope and the scope of the nursing assistive personnel, client needs, and the competency of yourself and the nursing assistive personnel. In order to delegate a task, it must be within your scope. You need to legally have the authority to delegate it, and you need to know the education, competency, and scope of the person you are delegating to. There are many different types of nursing assistive personnel. Unlicensed assistive personnel, or UAPs, are able to be given tasks that they are trained to complete as long as they are competent to perform the task and the client is stable. The NCSBN classifies all nursing assistive personnel that do not have a license as unlicensed assistive personnel, or UAPs, regardless of the titles that they may have earned. The types of certifications available for UAPs varies in different jurisdictions. Remember that the NCLEX is more general than that, so they will not ask you about state-specific delegation. For the NCLEX, remember that unlicensed assistive personnel must not be assigned to anything that requires nursing judgment. That makes sense, right? Since they're not nurses. So, any activities that involve medication administration, assessment, diagnosis, care planning, education, evaluation, nursing care, or nursing judgment cannot be assigned to a UAP. Unlicensed assistive personnel must not be assigned to care for unstable patients under any circumstances. When a patient is stable, there are a lot of basic care activities that can be delegated to an unlicensed assistive personnel. Once a task is delegated, the nurse must be available to guide the UAPs. Delegation involves more than just assigning tasks. The nurse delegating remains accountable for the delivery of safe care. The UAP is also accountable for their decision to accept the delegation and perform the task. However, the nurse needs to be sure that the UAP has the ability to meet the client's needs. The NCSBN website has an excellent video you should watch that talks about the process for delegation that involves assessment, delegation, monitoring, and evaluation. UAPs can collect observational data for the nurse and take vital signs, but the nurse needs to be the one to interpret the data and decide if the vital signs are abnormal or if an intervention is needed. Interventions, like providing bedside care, are often delegated. UAPs often encourage patients to drink, provide bed baths, position patients, feed patients, and remind them to do other things that other members of the healthcare team have already taught the patient how to do. UAPs can record intake and output, weigh patients, gather equipment for the nurse in many situations, and help with other activities of daily living. One commonly talked about UAP is the Certified Nurse Assistant, or CNAs. They are supervised by LPNs and RNs. They are certified to help people with activities of daily living, hygiene, measuring vital signs. They also help with other tasks like making beds or emptying catheters. Their schooling means that they have some basic knowledge of how to do these things. 
Training exists in some states for UAPs to become certified to do more, like administer medications, at which point they get a new title like Certified Medication Assistant, or CMA. These CMAs are able to administer medications under the supervision of a nurse. A licensed practical nurse, or LPN, is essentially the same thing as a licensed vocational nurse, or LVN. Registered practical nurses, or RPNs, in Ontario and Quebec are equivalent to an LPN in other parts of Canada and the United States. What you see in practice may vary, as the role of the LPN is rapidly expanding and governed by the laws of the state, province, or territory you are practicing in. However, for the NCLEX, remember that you can assign most medication administration to LPNs. You cannot assign them to care for unstable patients, or to do an initial or focused assessment, or evaluate a client. The RN remains responsible for the nursing process. Under the supervision of an RN, advanced practice nurse or physician, LPNs can perform sterile procedures and phlebotomy, take vital signs, change dressings, and help with activities of daily living. I recommend looking at the appendix of the American Association of Critical Care Nurses Delegation Handbook in the link below as it outlines in more detail what LPNs can and cannot do. As a registered nurse, you need to make decisions about patient assignments and transferring clients to another unit. As a general rule, be sure to assign the most critical patient to the most experienced and qualified nurse. Do not delegate care of unstable patients to UAPs or LPNs. If you need to make a decision about who to discharge, pick the most stable person. Keep the most unstable patient in the intensive care unit or transfer them there as needed. Never delegate an initial patient assessment or subsequent assessments. LPNs can do routine physical assessments, but RNs must complete assessments once in each 24-hour period. LPNs cannot assess patients in emergency situations. A lot of interventions will get delegated, but never delegate any that require specialized knowledge, judgment, or skill. LPNs can do a lot more than UAPs, like administer medications, but they are limited. Never delegate the formulation of a nursing diagnosis or goal identification. Never delegate creating or updating a care plan. Never delegate educating the patient and or family to a UAP. LPNs can educate clients, but they cannot assess learning barriers. Never delegate evaluation of progress towards meeting goals to UAP. LPNs can resolve problems on the care plan in consultations with an RN. Never delegate discussion of patient issues with a physician. The NCLEX is designed to test your critical thinking and professional judgment. The joint statement on delegation from the American Nurses Association and the NCSBN provides a guide to help you make a decision regarding what tasks can be delegated. With practice, you will get better at delegation decisions and you will be able to answer NCLEX questions. After watching this video, I recommend that you review the delegation process and the five rights of delegation. Then, practice NCLEX style questions as much as you can until you get good at delegation. Remember, it is a skill that needs to be practiced, much like your other nursing skills. Students recommend using the La Charity book. I have provided some links to some other helpful resources below. I hope you have found this video helpful. Please comment below if you feel there is anything that needs to be added. As a Canadian nursing professor, I had to do quite a bit of researching all the roles to understand and simplify them for you, so please let me know what you thought of this video. There are several links below the video to helpful delegation information. You may also want to subscribe and check out more of my NCLEX study tip videos. Thank you!